Uh, like Amy, my first exposure to MICTA came through the wonderfully stimulating academic network conference held in Seoul in May of this year. Such academic diplomacy, uh, I think, requires some explanation. It, it sits a bit awkwardly with standard ideas of what universities and research centres are all about. Naturally, we teach, we research, we write papers and books, interact with the media, and hopefully mentor rising generations. These are all big responsibilities. So what is the purpose of our academic diplomacy? I take such diplomacy to mean the international meeting of minds largely unencumbered by official constraints to take stock of the big issues and work towards shared understanding of current problems. Sometimes we refer to this as track two diplomacy, where track one is for officials and track 1.5 is caught somewhere in between. The second track, though, has its advantages. For a start, it should ideally provide a forum for the exchange of frank views, including those that might, as Amy suggested, be contentious. It makes sense that discussions at this level will lack the clout of their official equivalents, but they can also serve to generate some pretty useful advice. One of the problems, however, with many track two dialogues is that because neighbourly disputes and historical animosities tend to get in the way, there is some reticence about venturing too far from the standard scripts. And I think this is why our newly formed MICTA academic network has such great potential. When this mechanism for academic diplomacy was formally launched in Seoul, there was great enthusiasm about the sorts of contributions that it could make. Bold ideas came very thick and fast. And we're proud here at the ANU that our Bell School of Asia Pacific Affairs is the Australian hub for the network. And as discussions about what it might do have evolved, I've continued to wonder, how is it that we could position such an academic network so that it fully captures the potential for today's best practice in academic diplomacy? So let me give you my brief response to that question and consideration. First, I think such a network needs to set aside official hesitations. Professional academics and their students should be encouraged to push the envelope. Happily, such audacity emerged during the conference in Seoul. And I expect that over the months ahead, as we go through building up a, a series of unfolding MICTA academic events, there will be much more of that on the agenda. Second, uh, MICTA in this particular academic diplomacy incarnation clearly needs to tackle global level issues. As liberal societies forging their own democratic paths, influencing the lives of many hundreds of millions of people, the MICTA countries offer tremendous examples of how humanity is doing in the 21st century. What lessons can we draw from our respective experiences? These might be about education, technology, food production, urbanisation or political institutions. Such lessons might even lurch towards questions of creativity and cross-cultural collegiality, all topics I think we agree that we need to focus on. Third and finally, and I think this is where things get interesting, I imagine that MICTA could actually change how we think about diplomacy. Surely that's one of its starting points. I think that's particularly the case in the second track form. As we've already heard today, maybe MICTA can dispense with the official anxieties uh, that tend to go with other diplomatic treatments um, to give us some chances to do something fresh and different and new. So how is it that MICTA in this fashion could be different? From my perspective at least, the answer is in the constellation of interests and achievements of these five very different countries. On the second track, why not do the high-tech, no-hold-barred, non-traditional diplomatic activity that could be inconceivable with other partners. It should have hashtags, and Twitter storms, scenario planning and plenty of face-to-face -face exchange. As the report, the very handsomely produced report of the Academic Network Conference held recently in Seoul notes, what NICTA, MICTA needs is the savvy use of new technologies where hashtag MICTA should come to signify innovation and improved governance in the 21st century. So it's in this context 
that here at the Australian National University we are simply delighted that next month, with our federal government support, we will be welcoming a group of 25 students from across the MICTA countries for a two-week program of academic interaction on our campus. Also next month, Korea will host a group of 55 students and faculty in Seoul for another major academic event. And hopefully these are just the beginning of ever more creative and constructive MICTA scholarly engagements over the months and years to come. So my suggestion in conclusion is that in MICTA we should not limit ourselves to the patterns that prevail in today's academic diplomacy. This group, given its configuration, has the potential to set something of a new standard and to use this experiment in global interaction to break the mould. So on that very optimistic note, um, I look forward to the rest of the discussion. Thank you.